Baking soda, or sodium bicarbonate, is a type of salt that's either chemically manufactured or mined from large mineral deposits left behind from lakes that evaporated millions of years ago. Baking soda is used in so many ways, from external and internal health to household chores and cooking. It was even used by ancient Africans as a cleaning agent and to dry out bodies for the process of mummification. But just like with the videos on apple cider vinegar, I'm gonna stay in my lane and talk mainly about hair. There's so much conflicting information out there about using baking soda on your hair. Some people advocate that baking soda is a healthier and more effective alternative to store-bought shampoos, while other people advise against using it on your hair altogether. So to clear up the confusion, in this video, I'm gonna bring all that information together to compare the pros and cons of using baking soda on your hair. Baking soda has certain chemical and physical characteristics that makes it such a strong cleanser. One of the most well-known chemical characteristics of baking soda is that it has an alkaline pH. So when you use it on your scalp, it breaks through and lifts dirt particles and oil, including your natural sebum, so they dissolve easily in water. It has the power to wipe the slate completely squeaky clean. Physically, baking soda looks like a fine powder, sort of like flour, but if you take a closer look, it's actually made of fine crystals. If used as a paste, these crystals make baking soda abrasive, giving it the ability to also act as an exfoliator, which is a bonus. Okay, so far these are the positives about using baking soda on your hair. Now let's talk about the negatives. Baking soda has an alkaline pH of 9. As you can see, a pH of 9 is not within the safe zone. One problem with baking soda is that it's not the easiest thing to dilute in water. This is a cup of distilled water, which has a neutral pH of about 6. If I add just a teaspoon of baking soda, the pH will still read at around a 9. You would have to add 4 more cups of water to bring just one teaspoon of baking soda to an area within the safe zone. So in total, it will take five cups of water to bring just one teaspoon of baking soda to a pH that's safe to use on your hair. Here's why that is. I know when looking at the whole pH scale, a pH of nine may not seem too alkaline, but for hair strands, it is. In fact, the reason why people notice that their hair immediately feels very soft and fluffy after using baking soda is because the alkaline pH loosens slash damage their cuticles. So there's no argument that baking soda has to be diluted. Water has a neutral pH of about six, sometimes seven. When you mix the two, you'll land at a pH somewhere in the middle. Because the pH of water and baking soda are so close, it takes a large amount of water to dilute just a small amount of baking soda. The alkaline pH of baking soda can be very drying to your actual hair strands. And if you use it too often or use the wrong measurements, it will eventually eat away at your hair strands, similar to what relaxers do. Another issue with baking soda is the residue it leaves behind. The best way to witness this is to wipe a dark colored surface with the water and baking soda mixture. Even after diluting it with all that water, the residue left behind is still really noticeable. Over time, this same residue also builds up on your hair. Even though the amount of baking soda in this diluted mixture seems super small and insignificant, it's still very drying and damaging. Just to show you how powerful it is, I coated my hands with the cream and washed it with just a mixture. It's kind of hard to tell from this clip, but not only did it remove all the product from my hands, it also left them really dry. So here's an overview of the positives and the negatives side by side. As you can see, the positives are pretty much canceled out because even though baking soda is clarifying, it leaves a residue on your hair. Also, baking soda must be diluted with a lot of water 
for it to be a pH within the safe zone. Because of that, it loses its exfoliating abilities. In the next video, I'm going to talk about the baking soda relaxer. And in the video after that, I'm going to talk about the pros and cons of using both baking soda and apple cider vinegar together on your hair. So please stay tuned. As always, thanks for watching. See you in the next video.